system works well too. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another God's peace. Oh, no, it isn't. That's true. I didn't know you. <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen you. You were uh, about six inches shorter last time. Peace be with you. Thank you. Where do you go to school? I go to UNO. UNO. All right. That's such a pretty good school. Yes, I like you a lot. Peace, right. my dear. Peace. Charles, Peace. Our service this morning begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom of him now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know, understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. <clears throat> A lesson from the second book of Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went to Baal Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out 
of the house of Abinadab, who was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God. <clears throat> we will say this psalm together, Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it on the seas, and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord, and who can stand in its holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by the ways of fraud. They shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and the just reward from their God is our salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, and of those who seek your face, O God, to him. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he who is King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Amen. The epistle appointed for this morning is from Ephesians, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him 
who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Our sequence hymn today is found in the CHS Songbook, um, C11. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John whom I beheaded has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. <clears throat> but an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask of me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. 
She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. <clears throat> he went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. During my senior year of college, I attended a retreat for young adults in the Diocese of Nebraska. For part of that retreat, James Croats, then the Bishop of Nebraska, spent a day with us. I remember Bishop Croats sharing with us a way to study the Bible. He shared that he found this method particularly enjoyable. It really is a very simple formula. When reading a passage, you ask yourself three questions. One, what is God asking us to do? Two, what are the obstacles from preventing us from doing it? And three, what are God's promises if we do? I have found that in many scripture passages, the answer to these questions come quite simply. Other times it takes some work to understand God's intent. But that is completely true of understanding God in general, with or without this formula. I noticed while reading the passage from Ephesians, I was able to answer the questions. And to me, the answers define our beliefs as Christians. Paul wrote this during his first imprisonment in Rome. And to the people of Ephesus, you know, people like you and me, not just the leaders or the new converts, but everyone, to help them continue to grow in their faith and perhaps understand some of the things I'm gonna discuss. What we show in our bulletins today as six sentences from this reading is actually one very long sentence in the King James and other versions. And as typical of Paul, this powerful sentence is full of praise to God for what he has done, as well as a reminder of the love of God and what he has for us. The first thing to understand is that God started it all. We read in John 1.1 1, 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God had everything planned before there was a beginning, <coughs> including the spiritual blessings that Paul referenced in the passage. God planned everything for us. Paul explains that, or explains that God destined for us. The word destined can be problematic for some. As Episcopalians, we do not believe in predestination as the Calvinists do, and I do not believe that's what Paul was saying at all. Rather, before there was creation, God planned the world for love, and this love is for all of humanity. It had nothing to do with anything that we did or did not do. It was all God. There were no people when God destined for us, yet there was a solution for us to belong to God's kingdom. God designed our redemption through the blood of Christ, and so of course only God could have done that. Think about how God put this all into action. We have free will, and therefore God does not demand that we accept salvation. We can choose whatever it is that we want, but for us alone, it is impossible for us to choose our faith. We simply cannot because we are all broken sinners. In God's goodness and in God's plan, 
He chose to send Christ to save us and the Holy Spirit to give us our faith. This is where our free will comes in. We have to choose the salvation and faith that has been offered to us. One theologian explained it this way. A tree cannot will itself to bear fruit. God has to enable the tree to do so. We cannot just bear the glory of God. We have to be redeemed through Christ and accept our faith brought by the Holy Spirit. Let's focus about Christ's role in this. As Paul calls out, we are adopted as God's children through Jesus Christ. We are baptized into Christ, that is, into his death and his resurrection. Therefore, it is through Christ we bear fruit. Paul really wanted the Ephesians to understand his point about the role of Christ. Over and over again, Paul states, in Christ or in him. In this one sentence passage, Paul states, in Christ or a synonym of it, ten times. Why do you think Paul emphasized that so much? If we tried to gain adoption into the kingdom of God without Christ, we would fail. Let me say it again. It could only be done through Christ. Perhaps I can say it another way. Remember the spiritual blessings I mentioned at the beginning. All blessings are in Christ, including that of adoption. So the good news of our salvation is in Christ. Think about it. All of human history from the beginning through the gospel pointed to Christ. And all of history since and all future going forward points to Christ's return. With Christ at the center of human history, everything and everyone has to be in him. I said earlier that God had planned since before creation that our salvation would come through Christ in his death and resurrection. We are baptized into it. And during baptism, we are sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is how we can be sure of our inheritance and why our baptism is so important. It is a confirmation that we have been forgiven and that our faith is not an exercise in futility. The Holy Spirit has a pretty significant role in this. The Holy Spirit enacts the plan of God through the work of Christ in our lives. In addition, the Holy Spirit is a glimmer of all that we will inherit in the kingdom of God by our adoption through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives and keeps us in our faith. So you might be thinking, okay, Terry, but what about that whole Bishop Croats thing at the beginning? So here is the formula. One, we are being asked with Christ in us and the Holy Spirit guiding us to show God's glory. That is why we all exist. Two, the obstacle is our own sin to which we are slaves, but through Christ's death and resurrection, we are adopted as God's children. And three, the promise is a share of every spiritual blessing, more than we can ever imagine in God's kingdom. So, to show God's glory, may we always choose salvation and faith. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God, the Father, and His Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was a man. For our sake he was crucified. 
satisfied under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and again, glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on Form 3, on page 387, in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray, we pray for our Holy Catholic Church. That we have all one. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, please pray for the Church of Ireland. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, uh, pray for St. Mary's, Nebraska City, Reverend Mavis Hall, Camp Canterbury, our campers, camp staff, and directors in the DR. The Holy Name Church, the Grand Commission Church, St. Gabriel Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, pray for the lay Eucharistic visitors for Santa Anna Mission in the DR. For this gathering and for all strive to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Let your name be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, Ted, our deacon, Terry, our candidate for the diaconate, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for President Joe Biden, our governor, Jim Pillen, for all elected and appointed officials of the communities in which we live, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Lord, we lift up those in our congregation and those we know who are ill, especially Barb P., Shannon, Lily, Diane, Candy, Spencer, Ted, Ted and Sue P. Are there others? Yeah. Alberta. Those who were injured at yesterday's rally in the attempted assassination of former President Trump. Lord, have compassion on those that suffer from any grief or trouble. We remember all those who have died, especially, are there others? Those innocents who died yesterday's rally. Give to all the departed eternal rest. Let the light of will shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in their heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those that are deployed and in harm's way. We pray for Sarah. Are there others? Be, be with them and their families, Lord. Give them comfort and hope until they are once again reunited in peace. 
We pray for those who we pray for those that watch o the, over those who travel, including Christy S. Are there others? Keep them safe as only you can. We ask for that you continue to pour your blessings on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Jared S. Molly S. Are there others? Yes. And, and those who are celebrating anniversaries, Laura and Jason J, JR and Cindy P, Frank and Peggy Z, Chris and Jennifer B, Shane and Sherry N. Are there others? Oh, oh God, our O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. And by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth, in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn today is number 686, found in the blue 1982 hymnal, 686.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and that thy alone have been given me. Amen. Our service today continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal element you brought forth the human race, and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust. And we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you. Joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, Proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this with the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he gave thanks, he said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate his death and resurrection, and we wait for his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only, and not for renewal. With the grace of this holy communion, make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the blood of Christ, The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty and heavenly God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food for the most precious body and blood. Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And for the sure of us in the Holy Spirit, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. That we pray that we remember of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. So first off, I just want to mention uh, we had a great trip uh, to the DR this last week. And we even brought everybody back. Even Isaiah's back, safe and sound. Um, yeah. It was really um, probably one of the more powerful youth trips that I've been on. Um, our youth did an amazing job um, working, and, and they bonded together so quickly. It was just, I've not seen that happen before. Uh, but one of the things that I walked away most spiritually blessed by was we did something new with our youth this time that they weren't exactly thrilled with when I told them. Every day we asked them a question and we videotaped their response. The idea is that we'll use some of that for advertising across the diocese, but the answers they gave were so meaningful, so uh, spirit-filled and blessed that um, they were just wonderful. You will see some if you will see some more of them on um, our Facebook group uh, coming up here. Um, I'm hoping to get another one up at the diocesan. For hopefully, those of you who received the ministry memo saw the first one, um, which was that first night when we surprised them and said, "Hey, guess what we're doing?" Um, and but the one that they did at the end uh, is about two and a half minutes long, and it is really powerful. I, I will encourage you when it gets posted, please, please listen to it. Um, we got a lot done. The outside, they were quick with painting. Uh, I'll tell you what, I was really surprised. They got two coats of paint on that church in the four days that we were there and still got other work done. Um, we got a lot of the land cleared again. Uh, the church wanted us to put it in a garden, but they didn't keep the land cleared from the last time we were there. So we told them no. 
Uh, we weren't going to put any bushes or flowers in it. They were going to let the weeds and other bushes get to be about yay tall. So they got some time to keep it. Uh, we got it knocked down as much as we could with what we did. Uh, they get to do the rest of it and keep it that way. So what we wound up doing was we got a couple of weed whackers and we went to town. And some of our youth had a chance to have some fun with it too. So uh, it was a good trip, um, very good, um, uneventful. They got to get in a little sightseeing, which was not typical of a youth trip. Uh, but they got to get some sightseeing in. They saw some neat places. And they got two really nice dinners. We always do one nice one at Angelo's at the end, but they got another one that some of you may have seen the pictures. We went to a restaurant on the, on the, on the shore. So it was really nice. Um, for those of you who have bought shares of stock in Isaiah's trip, or if you helped with Marsha on her last April trip, um, please, there will be some invitations going out, but please join us on Friday, August 9th for our stockholders dinner where our youth and our team uh, will come and give thanks for all of your support. And we'll have a crowd from St. Augustine's out in Elkhorn and our youth from North Platte said he will probably be coming in with his family. So, and then of course, Ashley will be here and Father John Schaefer will also. So you'll get to hear a little bit of the team. We'll have pictures. They'll get a chance to tell you a little bit about their experience. Uh, it'll be a good night. So please watch the calendar for that. Other things happening, we are going to have services this Wednesday morning. I'm back in town for one more week. Uh, then I'm on the road again. Uh, there's a song about it like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be back on the road. We will have... Um, I want to thank Terry and Ted for taking care of Compline while we were gone. Our youth were actually interested in wanting to do Compline from where we were at, but we did not have a, a reliable internet. It was it was shaky at best. So, um, and part of the service we did in Compline was in Espanol. So, it would have been nice for you to participate in that. But they did a great job. Uh, today is the last day for school supplies. Um, I will be taking all of those over to Bellevue together tomorrow morning, somewhere around 10 o'clock. Youth pilgrimage is next Sunday. For those of you who are going, for parents who are here with others who are scouts at camp, um, we are going to be spending the first night on the floor at a church about halfway between here and where we're going. So you might want an air mattress, a blanket of some kind, uh, maybe a pillow, that'll be fine. We're going to be staying at the cathedral in Cincinnati. They do have beds. Um, there are showers, so please plan accordingly. Um, what was that? Yay, they got showers. Yay, they got showers, yes. Um, we are also going to, be, we need everybody bring a water bottle if you've got one. Uh, we won't be able to take them to uh, the, the Ark Adventure, or Encounter, excuse me, but we will be able to use them there at the church where we're at and in the car. So please, if you have a water bottle, bring a water bottle, bring your swimsuit. We are going to go to a water park as well as a extra towel if you need one for that. Anything else that I need to talk about, Sharon? Okay. Was there some other food thing? Yep. Um, the meals right now, we're going to have uh, pulled pork one night, tacos another night. Um, there'll be a pasta of some kind one night, and then the other night we're not quite sure of yet. We're working all of that out. For the parents, we're going to leave here by noon on Sunday. Um, and then our plan, I like that, our plan is to be back on Friday night about 8 p.m. All right. Uh, kids will text you when we're about an hour or two out. Uh, try to get hold of you, let you know that we're on our way. But uh, our plan is to be back Friday night at 8 o'clock. For those who may not know what we're doing, we are going to Noah's Ark, uh, the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. We're going to visit the Creation Museum. And then we are going to visit a new museum since we live there. Um, Cincinnati has got an Underground Railroad Museum, and it looks really interesting. So this is really pilgrimage, not mission. So... Um, but it'll be really fun. 
Summer lock-in. We're going to plan, we are planning a end of summer lock-in on Friday the 22nd for youth 10 to 18. There is a sign up at the Spirit Hub. Please let me know. If I survive this next week, we'll, we'll press August forward. 2nd. August 2nd. August 2nd, thank you. Um, if I survive this next week or so, we will have it. Otherwise, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, Arrows Aerospace Parade. Um, Barb is coordinating the float. I'm going to go reserve the trailer tomorrow. Um, if you would like to help her, please talk to her during coffee hour. Um, we are also going to need volunteers to ride on the float, hand out candy, all those good things. And I did get an update on the sanctuary lighting. Um, they got a hold of me while I was in the Dominican and said uh, they are having supply chain issues. We've never heard of those before, have we? The lights are all back ordered. It's going to be a couple of months, which really is actually a blessing because we still want to raise about another $5,000 to make sure that we cover all of the costs. So if you are able to give something to help replace the lighting upstairs, just put lighting in the memo of your check. All right. Birthdays and anniversaries. JR and Cindy are online. Who's online? JR and Cindy. JR and Cindy are online. All right. So I don't see anybody else with the birthday or anniversary listed. Are there any that didn't get in the bulletin? Would you please join me in the uh, anniversary prayer? Oh, okay. gracious and heavenly God, look mercifully on those who have been joined together. Grant them your blessing, assist them with your grace, and keep them from all evil. volunteers to grab all the books. Um, we have a couple of wagons over here. We need to take them back upstairs and put them back in the pews where we got them from. If you all would be, uh, let me know or help with that, we would greatly appreciate it. Coffee hour folks will get set up as soon as we get the altar out of the way. And I, oh, one announcement I forgot is, I do want to remind everybody, uh, rem remembers Wanda Roney, uh, her funeral or her celebration of life is next Saturday, 11 o'clock here. Visitation is Friday at uh, Funeral Home and Papillion. It's in the open online. Please stand. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our going forth him is? One more thing. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Thank you. Pray for me as I plan a wedding on a pizza party. <laughs> <laughs> we will. God bless. Thank you. God bless. What is our offertory? It in? is 495. I mean, 495 in the blue 1982 handle. <laughs>